So I got ghosted again. Dating for straight girls is like shopping. Dating for straight men is like an interview. And I'm no straight man. But the last few months, I'm starting to feel like one because I'm realizing dating girls, it's sort of like trying to figure out this whole lesbian gay girl algorithm. They all seem to have in one way or another ghosted me with the last one being Sarah in the Netflix documentary. I'm thinking like I have to figure out this whole dating girls thing because either that or I go back to being straight and date men again, which I don't think is for me. But if I can't manage to get a date, I might just be single forever. But I do have an idea. <laughs> now, before Sarah, there was Naima. Naima ghosted me too, but she actually messaged me back like six weeks later to apologize. So. I kind of thought, what if I texted her to see if she would be down to meet me in person so that I can ask her some questions? I'm guessing she's somewhat a seasoned lesbian. Uh, so maybe, just maybe, I can get some dating advice. Also ask her why she ghosted me. And you might be thinking, my, she ghosted you. She obviously doesn't want to meet you. What makes you think you can get her to talk to you? in person, on camera, and give you dating advice. But you know, one of the most valuable things I've learned in my 35 years of life is you always shoot your shot. So, fuck it, let's try it. Hi. <laughs> So I'm going to apologize right now because I have to give Naima subtitles. She speaks English. I just fucked up the audio is all. One of the first questions I had started this whole dating journey was, am I, am I not gay enough? Do I not look gay enough? You know, I know that lesbians are not like this one stereotype there. Right. It's right. And so I was like, I need to buy some rainbow stickers or something. <laughs> yeah. And, and, put him somewhere so that people know. When I was 20 years old, I also felt a similar way, and I never ended up cutting my hair off, but I thought maybe I should. Maybe I'll have an easier time dating people. Interesting. Yeah, so I don't think that that's um, an uncommon feeling for more fun presenting people. Fem. Right. <laughs> presenting? Yeah, okay. So uh, you have Butch, we have on the other end of the spectrum, a lipstick lesbian. But we more so just say femme. I mean, you have the golden retriever lesbians, the hey mama lesbians, and, you know, chopstick lesbians. It's, it's kind of oh my god! I yeah, I need a gloss. <laughs> <laughs> okay, at this point, we were getting along pretty well, right? And I was having a lot of fun. So I thought, why don't I ask her out again? Um, worst that can happen is I get rejected again. But you know, fuck it, let's try it. So actually, I started dating somebody recently. Well, fuck. So we changed subjects, and I asked about dating girls that are not out yet. Would that put you off from dating somebody in the future that isn't necessarily about you? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Huh. I mean, if you think about it, let's mm -hmm. say that you were going on a first date with a guy, and on this first date, he was like, by the way, I've never dated anyone before. And I'm still a virgin, and I've never kissed anyone. What? <laughs> you, really? Yeah, it's not it's, cool. Did she just indirectly call me a virgin? Yeah, yeah, because, I mean, maybe not as bad, yeah. but maybe that's the wrong term. I have to be careful. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's not as extreme, but it's very, very similar because yeah. you know, with, the physical, like, with the physical aspect of things, mm -hmm. there's a learning curve, I'm sure, and then just the normal dynamic between couple like when you've never dated somebody before there's so much self-discovery that needs to be made which you can 
have some of that information if you come from heterosexual relationships, but it's going to be different. And so mm-hmm. there's still so much self-discovery that needs to happen. And it's kind of harder to take that on in a partner when you've already done all of that and done all that work. So at this point, I was thinking, let me take you out and we'll see. Of course, that's just my ego talking because she's absolutely right. To put that all on your partner to kind of teach you the ropes of this new dating territory is unfair. That's a lot for a person to handle. Well, so mission aborted, but all I had left was just one question. Why did you go to Nice gains, but what about your face? Excuse me? Check this out. With our patent pending face shaping technology, you too can get a sharp jawline. Why did you ghost me? I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So I think that at the time, I overestimated how much free time I had. And so I had like three or four days lined up with you being one of them. Mm -hmm. And I got very overwhelmed and ghosted everyone. (laughs) So here's the thing. Naima is a surgeon in residency and she works up to like 90 hours a week. Uh, And that time uh, she was working at the ER. I didn't even take it personally. I had no hard feelings. Um, I was just using this as an excuse for clickbait. So, sorry about that. And honestly, I just wanted to hear what she had to say in person. But you know how celebrity couples have Brangelina or Benifer? I was thinking Maima would sound pretty cool. Just saying. I'm curious if you'd be down to try something. What's the thing? <laughs> <laughs> Look at my niche profile. Oh yeah, sure. I do this for people all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know if you see any pics. For yours. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And- confusing because it's like what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> somebody right here <laughs> like why are you why are you recording a video of you kind of like splashing in the water <laughs> good good point so yeah. i will be off my smoke obviously i like her but you know you don't flirt with people in relationships right and of course i'm not her type either but she did give me a starting point on how to navigate this whole girl dating world so i think i got a game plan very cheesy and problematic but ask any lesbian if they hate jenny and everyone will say absolutely and everyone has a crush on shane why are you recording a video of you kind of like splashing in the water Is your name Google? Because you've got everything I've been searching for. (laughs) Are you from Tennessee? (laughs) Because you're the only 10 I see. Um, (laughs) Oh God, if you were a vegetable, you'd be a cucumber. A a cucumber, (laughs) cucumber. C-U-T-E. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm I'm hey, trying to so, flirt. Okay. Nice teeth. Nice teeth? Tits. I said tits. Tits. Oh. <laughs> That's my pickup line. There you go. <laughs> nice tits. Okay. Yeah. You want to go out? Converted. <laughs> so I just impulsively bought some concert tickets to see Troy Boy this Friday. I could really use a date, but I don't have much time. So I think I'm going to have to go find somebody in person. A girl. Of course. So I went to a lesbian bar to look for a date. I went super early, like a loser, (laughs) because there was like me, a few other people, and then this really 
quite older gentleman. I ended up sitting at a table next to the the older man. We started talking. Basically, his wife passed away a year and a half ago, and he felt like he was finally ready to kind of start exploring dating again, particularly this side of his sexuality um, that he was always honest with his wife and kids about, but uh, never came out to other people about it because it's, you know, there's, there's definitely fear of judgment there and I won't get into the details of that. I gotta respect his privacy, right? And let's call him John. So John came to this lesbian bar because he's attracted to a particular type of woman and he wanted to see if he could meet somebody, right? It's pretty much same reason as me, but except I had like two hours to find a date to this concert in this empty bar and I'm talking to like a man. So on the surface, we looked completely mismatched. I'm this younger Asian girl dressed in flannel. And he's the 70 year old, very eccentric looking male with uh, black fingernails. But if you think about it, we had so much in common because we were both exploring this other side of our sexuality, neither of us out yet, and neither of us had any idea of what the fuck we were doing. Neither of us drank either, so I guess you don't go to bars at 6 p.m. It almost felt like we were meant to meet because we were both able to kind of talk about the things that we were thinking and feeling and curious about. And he was like, I'm not attracted to this person, but I like this type of person. But I mean, I'm not gay, right? Is there a name for this? Like, what do you even call me? And for me, it was the same thing. I don't think I'm bisexual, but I'm not like lesbian. Is there a name for me? We're just both clueless teenagers, maybe virgins. Eventually the bar started filling up. And I felt like being in middle school when you're at a dance and you're like up against the wall with your buddy and like looking at girls, <laughs> seeing who you should ask to dance. And he would be like, look at that girl. She's kind of cute. What do you think? And I'd be like, no, she's not my type. He ends up buying me this rose and tells me, before we leave, you have to give this to a girl you're attracted to. And there was only one person in this entire bar I was actually interested in. Um, I wrote my phone number on the rose and I ended up giving it to the bartender. But the rest of the night, John and I just talked and hung out and checked out girls. <laughs> so you can probably guess I totally skipped the concert. Basically, I told John, hey, we're both here on a mission. Let's help each other. Let's be each other's wingmen and uh, help us both get dates. Unfortunately, neither of us got a date and it's been a couple weeks. I haven't heard from the bartender, but I honestly, I, I couldn't have made the night any better. Like it, I had so much fun hanging out with John and both of us relating to this baby gayness that we're, we're dealing with right now. Something we're both learning to navigate through each in our own ways. But I, I definitely do plan to reconnect with John and uh, be his wingman. So yeah, that was my first uh, baby gay bar experience. Having is experience of wanting. So if you're having this experience of being ghosted, a part of you enjoys... I do. <laughs> <laughs> enjoys that uh, yes. to some degree. Perhaps it's creating an arousal factor. Perhaps it's creating a thread that ties you to the stories that you've been telling yourself about yourself. Huh. And so it's playing out in this fear because it's playing out internally in your subconscious. Yeah. That's, that's hilarious. Okay, so Tia was right. She called me out. So I kind of lied to you guys about something. I'm not necessarily struggling with online dating. I'm just really picky. And the couple of girls that I was interested in, uh, they did ghost me. So I was really bummed out by that. But when she said there's a part of me that enjoys getting ghosted, I realized at that moment because I reacted so quickly that that is true. I enjoy the challenge. I like going into something being like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, but I want to figure it out. And the last two months of trying to figure out the, the whole gay girl dating world has been so fun for me. I got to meet a lot of interesting people, you know, get out of my comfort zone, make this silly video. But I realized I have to actually take this seriously eventually because I do want to find my person. One thing that I did learn this past month is that lesbians go crazy for Shane. Shane is this character in the L word and she's sort of like the heartthrob um, because she carries herself with such confidence and swagger and all that. When I was in Austin, I met somebody at a comedy club that is kind of to me maybe the Shane of Austin. You look like TikTok people, no? <laughs> Which I do mean as an insult, yes. I feel like she's very knowledgeable and has the a little bit of the Shane swagger. And so I'm thinking, what if I start with her? What if I have her coach me on everything I need to know about dating girls um, so that I don't remain a virgin? <laughs> she barely knows me, but you know what? 
I'm just gonna give it a try, see how it goes. Is this a still a good time? Yeah, yeah, we're good. And so that's like the whole idea, the concept behind it. And I'm wondering if you'd be down for me to hire you, sort of like as a, I don't know, queer dating coach for like a day or two. Yeah, I'm interested. That sounds fun. The thing is, I haven't gotten a date with a girl yet. So we're working <laughs> I on that you first. Get to a date with a girl. I'm pretty okay. confident in that. Yeah, um, there's a specific yeah. girl actually in Austin. Uh, um, so we can make that part of the, maybe the goal in January, see if, uh, where it goes with it. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Ariel. Thanks. Bye. Bye. I'm going to Austin for my birthday. You have a Vietnamese rice patty hat in the background. <gasps> Sounds no. gay. I'm in. <laughs> I know. Sure about your sexuality here? Like, are you pretty sure?